Okay, so I thought I'd do a video demonstration of this software. I know I've posted various clips and previews on Facebook and YouTube. But I've never actually just explained how this software works. Um, so this is a recreation of the famous scene at the end of Twister when they finally managed to deploy Dorothy. And I've kind of taken a few creative liberties, but um, in terms of the layout and the colors and the fonts and the sizes of everything, I've tried to make it as close to the movie as possible. So on this first screen, what you can do is you can um, move and pivot the view around. Um, you can either use the WASD keys or the arrow keys. So you can pan the view around like this and rotate it. And you can also zoom in and out using either the Q and E keys or the plus and minus keys. So you can zoom and adjust the view here. Um, you can toggle the sound um, using the M key, so for mute, so I can unmute the sound here. So that just adds on the sound effects from the movie. And then what you can do is uh, generate different sized tornadoes. So by simply hitting the F key, so if you hit F1, um, this tornado will start to change shape and it'll eventually shrink down to the size of an F1 tornado. So go ahead. and each time you hit this, so I can hit F1 multiple times, it'll generate a, a slightly different shape each time. And you can see the funnel's getting thinner there. You can also hit the C key, um, and that will make the funnel curve. You can see here we start to get more of an elephant trunk shape, just like the first tornado in the movie. You can then uncurve it by pressing C again, and it'll go back to more of the um, stovepipe or rope shape. So that's F1, you can hit, um, then I'll hit F5 again, you can also hit F2 through F4 as well and it'll start to um, increase in size until you've got an F5 um, sized funnel again. Yeah, I know the, the size isn't directly correlated to the um, strength of the tornado, but for the sake of this visualization I just thought uh, that's the easiest way of doing things. Uh, so this is the main view. Um, on this view what you can also do is click this filter button and that brings up this screen. So this allows you um, to tune the performance. So uh, what this does is it changes how often a new sensor is created. I've got it set to zero so the PC is just going to generate as many as it can. But if your computer is struggling you can set a new value to so say um, 0.2 and you'll get fewer sensors. So if your system's uh, struggling you can adjust these values um, I'd recommend 0 to maybe 0 0.05 uh, then each time it creates a new sphere um, it's going to create anywhere between 4 and 7 again you can adjust those values to, to your system's performance and you've got here um, a frame rate counter so I'm getting a constant 59 frames a second 60 frames a second so you can change this so if you wanted 2000 spheres um, you can do that you'll have um, more dense of a visualization or if you PC's struggling with that, set it down to 200. Um, but if you do decrease the number of spheres, you see the kind of, you kind of get these intermittent bursts of sensors. So if you do decrease the number of spheres, you probably want to increase the frequency. So let's say to 0.1. But I think the default settings should work for um, most PCs. So once you've done that, you can close the panel. So this is just to tune it to, to whatever your system. So if you want to recreate this on an old laptop, it, it may well struggle to um, do this visualization. Uh, so that's um, everything on this um, page. The next is the data views page. So you can just click the data view. This is a 3D render screen. The, it blinks whichever screen you're on. So I can switch to data views. And this shows you the side elevation and top down view of the tornado. Again, you can hit the F keys and the C key and it'll curve and change the size of the tornado. So I could hit F3 here and it'll start to shrink. So that's this view. Um, you'll see all three of these views in the movie. Um, and finally, you can go on the telemetry view. And this just generates uh, random numbers as it um, goes down and I've tried to match these colors and the names of the groups to the movie. So if we go back to the um, 3D render view, um, there's another feature which I've been working on for a long time, um, which I've, um, it's still not finished, but it's now in the software. So here I've got the real time button blinking. And um, so uh, everything in here is just an animation. So uh, it's, it's randomized, but it's just animated. If we click real time, we then brought into what I've called lab mode. 
Now, what this lets you do is rather than just having um, the census follow a preset path, this actually uses physics simulations and equations, which I got from some papers, um, which are to deal with modeling tornado wind fields. It lets you run an actual physics simulation. So the way this works is um, you've got two sections here. You, um, you can drop sensors, so it'll just randomly drop sensors on the onto the plane of the um, simulation. You can again, you can move to using the WASD keys, you can zoom in and out using Q and E, or you can use the arrow keys and the plus and minus keys. Now, next, what you can do is um, set different parameters. So we've got the funnel radius here, that's in meters, so I'm just going to keep it as the default. Um, you can set the radial wind speed, so this is the speed of the wind moving towards the center of the funnel. And I've added these icons just to remind you know, what these are. So this is the speed of the wind get, of objects getting stuck towards the funnel. You can then set the circumferential uh, velocity, so this is the speed that things are rotating around the funnel. And then the vertical velocity, so uh, how uh, strong is the wind going in the vertical direction. Then go have called the suck zone altitude. Um, this is just the altitude above ground um, where the suction from the tornado is strongest. Um, I've defaulted it to one meter. Um, I think any other values tend to not work too well, but feel free to experiment with that. And then finally, we've got what's called the swirl factor, and that is the ratio of the wind speed. It's essentially the ratio of the wind speed circulating the funnel to the um, vertical wind speed, if I remember the definition correctly. So I'll just demonstrate changing each, each of these. So we've dropped the sensors, and we've got the default values. So let's just spawn a twister. And so this looks similar to the previous um, visualizations. However, the difference here is this is using a physics simulation rather than um, being programmed to match what you see in the movie. Um, so we can change things. So we could decrease the funnel radius. So let's say decrease it to uh, 10 meters. What we can do is we can just clear the sensors, drop a bunch of new sensors here. And you can see you've got the wind speed. So this is the uh, this takes each of these into account and calculates the wind speed and gives you an F and EF rating and as well as the cape value. Um, this still needs some tweaking, but it seems roughly right. So you can see we've got a different shape here, and that's because we've changed the funnel radius. We can then change the swirl factor, so let's change it to 2. And as you can see, it's rotating twice as fast now, um, or we could change this to something like, say, 0.5. And that's just... Sometimes when you change the parameters, sometimes it's just to really clear the sensors and drop them again, just because you'll get something different. So you can see as you change each of these parameters, you get a different size and shape funnel. Uh, so if I set the swirl factor back to 1, the funnel starts to widen. Um, I can maybe turn this into a drill bit. So let's, instead of having 45 mile an hour winds, let's say it's rotating at 200 miles an hour. And let's say we've got 150 mile an hour winds feeding into it. So let's just clear the sensors and drop them again. So you can see you've got very violent rotation here. I've got an F4 slash EF5. Uh, as you see here, the circulation is so violent, the sensors are kind of um, staying at the same height. There's not The wind speed is much stronger rotating around than it is blowing vertically, which is why they're kind of spinning out into this band here. So I could increase this as well. So let's set this to 120. And I've got an F5 rated tornado. Uh, um, so you can experiment with this to get different types of visualizations. I could maybe decrease that if I want the um, vertical wind speed to have more of an effect. So this is kind of simulating if you did drop a big barrel of sensors, and um, what path would they actually follow? And it's going to be different depending on how you adjust these um, parameters. So let me just clear that and set these back to the default. So the default was um, 20 meters, and each of these was set to 45 miles per hour. So what I've also been working on is you can generate a random city. So what you can do is you can choose a building material. So balsa wood, aspen wood, oak, brick, concrete, or steel. So let's just start with the weakest balsa wood. Then you've got the anchor strength. So this is um, each of the buildings are randomly generated out of multiple blocks. And this is essentially the strength. How strongly are these um, blocks anchored to each other? So let's just set something around here. So you hit spawn city and you get a randomly spawned city. And you see the tornado is still spawned. So this is an F0. And this is showing what would do would, what would happen to these buildings if they're built out of balsa wood. And this is just an estimation, but uh, you can see that each of the materials behaves differently. So what I can do is just unspawn the twister and clear the city. Um, you can also shift click. So if you want to create your own city, hold shift and click, and it'll generate a building wherever you click. Uh, the range of 
heights um, for creating individual buildings is higher than generating the city. So we've got a bunch of, I guess you can think of them as skyscrapers here. And again, um, maybe make it a bit more violent this time. So let's set each of these to 90 miles an hour. Maybe set the funnel radius to 30. So we've got an F2, EF3, and then when we spawn the twister, let's zoom out a bit. You can see the buildings will start to get torn into segments. So we can do the same thing again. So let's unspawn the twister and clear the city. So we can do something, let's say brick buildings, and let's set the anchor strength to very strong for that. Let's do the same thing again. So I'll spawn the twist again in F2, EF3. So you see there's a lot of damage for the balsa wood buildings. And for brick, there is still um, some damage, uh, but it's not quite as violent as we had with the balsa wood. So just as a direct comparison, let's change from this back to balsa wood. You can see the buildings are like instantly torn apart here, whereas with brick, um, it was more slow and gradual. The pieces weren't thrown as far. See, things get torn off in segments. And what we can do is clear the city. And if we set the anchor strength to zero, um, oops, every block will just be torn apart individually. You'll have a lot more um, pieces of debris. So let's, I'll just demonstrate a few more things here. Um, so let's unspawn that, clear the city. Uh, let's say steel buildings with the uh, strongest anchor strength. So again, in F2. Start to tear panels of roof off. You gotta bear in mind this bit here is like right in the very center of the funnel. So it damages that building, but everything else seems to be unscathed. Um, so then let's say orc, maybe set it down here. You see the roofs start to get ripped off and everything gets ripped apart. So this just allows you to essentially experiment. Um, with different setups, you can build different cities, different size tornadoes, and set different wind speeds and just see what happens. Um, each time you finish, it's best to clear the city, otherwise, if you keep spawning the city, um, eventually the frame rate's going to start to suffer. So it generates a different city each time you click. So you'll notice the frame rate's starting to drop a bit now, the movement's a little bit more jagged, so let's just clear that. So, yep, this is um, what I've been working on. I'm going to continue to add features. And what I'd quite like to do next is, rather than just have this be fixed in position, is allow you to actually control the tornado. So I'd generate just a blank plane with uh, multiple cities in different places. Then you can um, control where the center of the tornado is and move it around and just take a bit more control um, of the simulation. So this software is available for purchase. Um, I'll drop a link um, to the um, store um, in the Facebook post for this video. And if you're interested or you have any questions, just either leave a comment or message me directly. And thank you very much for watching.